This week on Maker Update, a haircut from a robot, the Atomic TV, making a toy ray gun, a physical mute button for Zoom, articulating skeleton fingers, and precision marking rulers. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back again with another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I had a great week off, and it's always fun to see a Sophie Wong edition of this show. Uh, I also got a chance to finish up my cocktail machine, which is finished, but I won't be talking about it in this show. I'll save it for another show. I'll talk to you about it soon. Uh, but for now, let's get talking about the project of the week. Chances are it's been a while since your last haircut. To help you out, Shane from Stuff Made Here made this incredible, slightly terrifying haircutting robot. You just stick your head up through the middle of this large bearing and a pair of servo-controlled scissors makes its way around your head over the course of 15 minutes. In order to get your hair up into the path of the scissors, a vacuum sucks your hair up while a pair of servo-controlled fingers clamp down the section of hair into a more scissor-friendly bundle. It's easy to take the whole thing as a joke, but Shane really engineered the crap out of this thing. He even goes into detail on some strategies that didn't work out, like a 3D sensing camera for detecting the location of your head, what he wound up doing instead is using a limit switch that probes the edges of your head to define a boundary and detect if your position has changed. It's a great entertaining video with a lot of insights on engineering and design. It's unfortunate that the machine left him with a mullet, but at least he survived. Now for some news. Speaking of potentially murderous household robots, last week saw the launch of Stretch, a robot from a new company called Hello Robot. This is a mobile robot that can manipulate different grippers with a telescoping arm. It has a sort of Roomba-sized base with this rail sticking out from the top that the arm can travel up and down on. An Intel RealSense camera sits at the top, allowing it to be operated remotely, but also giving it a spatial sense so that it can perform tasks on its own. A LiDAR sensor on the bottom helps to map and navigate its surroundings. While the videos show it cleaning up around the house, the real market for this is academic research. In that context, the $18,000 price tag is a relative bargain. It's out of my budget, but it does get me wondering how to augment my Roomba. Now for more projects, The Garage Journal has a video up on how he made this little retro Tom Sachs inspired TV that plays a loop of his favorite movies. Inside is a Raspberry Pi, a seven inch screen, and some speakers. There's also a neat little power supply in here that spits out five volts for the Pi and 12 volts for the screen, all coming from a 110 AC input. That was a new one for me. I suspect the Pi is running something like MP4 Museum or Kodi, but what really blows me away here is the attention to detail. From the vintage switch guards to the 12 volt lamp, the aluminum screen for ventilation, the fabric loop on the back, I just love how this thing looks and I'm moving my way through his older videos to pick up some of his techniques. On Instructables, Lone Soul Surfer walks you through his process for creating a toy ray gun from vintage parts. He's using an old electric drill casing, old lamp housing, and a bunch of odds and ends. Understandably, you'll be using whatever junk you have access to. The real substance of this guide are all the techniques for cleaning, modifying, and attaching old scraps together. He even shows you how to add battery-powered sounds and lights to make it more fun. There's a lot of great ideas in here. For another mix of old and new, Elliot Maid made this guide on making a physical mute button for Zoom calls. His version uses an Arduino-based DigiSpark board, but really you could replicate this project using any Arduino-style board capable of using an HID input library. Think of it like those Arduino macro keyboard projects, but with just one key. Again though, big points for style here. He's using a thick section of steel tubing along with these stained laser cut boards that plug the ends and offer some instructions. A short press toggles the mute on and off while a long press ends the call. Now for some tips and tools. On the Cool Tools channel, I have another video up talking with Jordan Bunker about these Incra marking rulers. These are a set of laser cut aluminum rulers that have holes for making exact measurements. If you're out of place with your craftsmanship where you agonize over which side of a line to mark your material, these allow you to consistently mark directly on the line. On Hackaday, I found these print and place board grippers designed by Sunshine. The clamping force is provided by the spiral spring built into the design. One version has an integrated stand that's a little wimpy. The other has a GoPro style mount that, in theory, you could attach more securely. Either way, the verdict is that they're better for displaying boards than working on them. Still, if you're like me, you've probably got a few boards worthy of displaying. 
Another cool but impractical 3D print that I want to make are these articulating finger extensions by Julie and Jean Roy. Each of these little finger extensions include geared knuckles that bend the fingers as they're pulled. Some simple ties back to a bracelet are all you need to create the tension. If you're thinking those would make a great addition to a Grim Reaper costume, Julian is way ahead of you with these 3D printed bones that fit over the finger extensions. These are awesome. I also thought this was cool. If you ever wish you had one of those missile launch style switch covers for your light switch, this 3D printed design by Nan Nan on Thingiverse lets you have exactly that. But the most useful part I found this week is this parametric hinge design by Jean Bilbao. If you ever need a custom hinge for something, this design can be tweaked using the Thingiverse customizer or imported into OpenSCAD, and you can adjust the width, number of hinges, size of the hinge hole, screw holes, it's all there. And in the latest issue of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, there's some great info on running three-phase tools on household power, making custom coiled cables, and factoring in the opportunity cost of freeing up space in your workshop. Check that out. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a new video up that explains the fundamentals of op amps or operational amplifiers. I first came across these when I got into making my own guitar pedals. They're perfect for amplifying signals, but they're also just the right thing for deliberately distorting them into a shredding guitar solo when you place them in the right circuit. I've seen a lot of videos on how to abuse these chips, but this is the first one I've come across that really explains how the chip works. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know you're out there, and uh, get on the Maker Up the email list if you're not on it already so that you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon, and an extra big awesome thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.